it's up to you. So we're going to move on. The first slide that we have is uh, about uh, rational numbers. If you guys remember, rational numbers are the numbers that are integers, uh, decimals, and fractions. So all these three type of numbers, we call them together as a rational numbers, okay? And this chart is actually tells everything about what you need to know about uh, rational numbers. So this yellow circle, this is a Venn diagram, okay? So whatever is inside of the yellow circle, we call them rational numbers. So including blue uh, circle and the green and uh, another green one, okay? So we talk about all of these rational numbers uh, until today. So rational numbers are natural numbers, including whole numbers with zero, including integers. Uh, don't, don't worry about this square root sign because square root of 49, it's uh, equals seven. So seven is integer also, and including the repeating de decimals. So when we say decimals, there is only repeating decimals or the decimals that are ending at some point like this, 3.4 ended, that's it. So, or fractions like this. But irrational numbers are opposite of rational numbers, which is letter pi, the value for pi is irrational, or the decimal number that it's not repeating and goes forever, dot, dot, dot. Non-repeating decimal numbers are irrational. Or square root two, square root three, or any other square root numbers that when you take it, uh, when you use your calculator, it's always uh, goes like non-repeating decimal number. So we call those numbers irrational, okay? And this is the one skill that you will do in IXL, uh, whether you need to know, like when you see a number, you can say either it's irrational or not, okay? That kind of practice. The second one, it's about multiplicative inverse. If you guys remember this, multiplicative inverse, it's always writing it down as over one. And another name was a reciprocal, okay? Reciprocal is, was like, you need to write it down anything with as a fraction, like four, is actually equal uh, four over one, right? And then just flip it. Reciprocal means flip the numerator with denominator or bottom and top. So re uh, reciprocal will be one fourth, okay? So this is kind of, this, this skill is the second skill that you will do on your IXL. For example, if the, uh, if the number is negative three, so you can rewrite that negative three as negative three over one, right? Any whole number can be written as over one. And then just flip it. So bottom number with top number. So it becomes one over negative three. So this means reciprocal. This means uh, another name is a multiplicative inverse. Uh, most of the time we, saw, we just say reciprocal. It's the shortest way to say it. And what is the reciprocal of 2D? Again, uh, 2D, it's, 2D, it's equal uh, one, 2D over one, right? Anything a whole, you can rewrite it over one. And then when, you, when you're asking reciprocal, you just need to flip this. So which means it's a one over 2D, okay? And for the fractions, for the fractions, uh, for fifth, reciprocal is just, it's already written as a fraction form. So that's easy. Now you just need to flip the bottom and top. So it becomes five over fourth, okay? And the last one, uh, let me show you one more. So it's a five eighth. So that would be five eighth. That is, oops, something is going on. Okay, five eighth. Uh, that's equal. Uh, not equal. Uh, when you flip it, it becomes uh, eight fifth. Okay, this is the second uh, skill that you will practice today on your IXL. Uh, finding a multiplicative inverse, which is flipping the numbers, I can say. That's the easiest way to remember. Reciprocal, it's a flipping the numbers, okay? So the last thing, and I said that's uh, optional. So uh, th this is the I A12 uh, practice. We call this factorial. And this is not the math that really uh, related to the seventh grade. It's just a, a general level that you need to know, okay? So uh, in this math, uh, like let's say in the classroom, let me count in my class, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven students. So if I ask my students, hey kids, let's line up. 
so there are a lot of ways students can line up uh, on the like at the door so a lot of possible ways for example student a can be first student b can second on the next time uh, the second possible way is student b can be first or another student comes next so so to find out the number of possibility that students can line up it's actually we use the factorial okay so factorial it's basically the exclamation mark this mark that comes after the number for example five seven or 12 uh, i gave these three examples so uh, let's let's let me show you to find out uh, i did this like manually like by writing it down every single option for three students there are three different ways that students can line up alan bob and cindy or alan cindy and bob so you can list them all of them but there is the easiest way to find how many different ways they can line up it's just uh, finding the number of students, which is three, and take the factorial. Factorial means put the exclamation mark next to it. The meaning of the explanation mark, uh, exclamation mark, is just that uh, you need to write it down that number, and you need to go like one, one by one until one. So, and you you need to multiply all these numbers: three times two, six, six times one, which is six. That means six different ways these students can line up. Uh, 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 at the door okay so let's say in the classroom there is a five students how many different ways they can line up is you just need to write it down like one by one five times so you need to go down four times three times two times one always you go until one so when you multiply them all i know it's a very hard you need to use your calculator 20 20 times 3 it's a 60 60 times 2 is 120 so five students in the classroom can line up 120 different ways uh, at the door, okay? So the last one, uh, uh, next one is, so I have in my classroom actually, it's a seven students. So now you need to multiply all of them like this, seven times, six times, five times, uh, four times. You, you need to go until one, three times and two times and one, okay? So seven students can line up in different ways this amount of, uh, way. So I know five times till one, it's 120, 120 times six. Oh, it's, uh, I, need, I, I need now calculator because it's hard, like uh, 42, it's a six time, uh, seven times six. And then you can, you can find something. Okay. So this is the way if 12, that means it's too much. Now 12 students can line up a lot of different ways. So you can, you need to multiply all the numbers that goes like 12, 11, 10, nine, and until one. So you need to multiply all of them. All right. So this is the, this is the lesson for today is uh, two of them are, uh, two of them are review and the, this factorial is a new for everybody. And you guys can do this like as an optional to try that you can understand this. And next thing, uh, there is a no we do part because this week is we're doing practices all the time. But and, uh, oh, there is a one more. Uh, it's a benchmark type question. So uh, in this benchmark type question, I just want to show you uh, different way of uh, different kind of question. Actually, you know this if I explain this because you already know this knowledge. But sometimes the questions may come in this way. It's kind of weird, like fraction over fraction, like numerator and denominator becomes fraction. Interesting. So this is also can be your uh, uh, your benchmark type question. So if you guys remember uh, all uh, all of the fractions are actually division so you need to find out what is the biggest fraction so this is the biggest line i have in this question okay so that biggest line will be your division so all fractions are division and i told you like numerator divided by denominator right so numerator will be the first thing so first thing divided by second thing so this is the another way you can rewrite it i know the questions may come like confused students, but if you give students in this form, everybody can do this, okay? I just wanna like remind you again, the fraction is a division. So you need to find in this kind of problems, like what is the, the longest fraction in that problem? So that was the in the middle right here, I showed you, 
okay? And the last one is uh, oh, 41 over 15. So now you can do the division. Because of, because of both numbers are negative, when you divide them, the same numbers become positive. So one step further, yes, the sign is positive for this result. So now you need to do the division. Keep the first, change the sign to the multiplication and flip the second fraction. So it's a 15 over 41 this time. And then you cannot simplify anything. So 15 times one, which is 15 and two times 41, which is 82, okay? So that means, uh, I know there is no options, but I think the student called Amber, uh, she got it right for this question, okay? So th that will be your uh, option for this question. And now, so this is the end of the problem, uh, end of the lesson. Now I'm gonna ask you to go back to your IXLs. The first one is rational or irrational. The next one is re reciprocal. The last one is optional, it's a factorial, okay? So now let me open up my chat box.